Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. I was recently asked to share some ideas for warm color grades that would suit aerial footage. And when it comes to warming up shots, there's really nothing to it. But let's take a look at some more advanced techniques for getting the most out of aerial footage. I have a short clip here that was filmed in St. George, Utah. It's really, really hot there. So adding a warm grade makes a lot of sense so that my audience get a sense of what it was like to be there. Now I could certainly come over here, try to move this over here to the right and warm up the shot. But let's take a look at some of the more advanced options within After Effects to give us more control over our grade. You've heard me say it before, take the angle of least resistance. If this was a raw still, I could recover a lot of these blown out highlights right here. But since this is 8-bit compressed video footage, one option is for us to work in 32 bits per channel and overlay 32 bit computer generated imagery on top of our footage. Here's what I mean. Now, if you come over here and you hold down the Alt key, click once, it'll change it to 16 bits per channel. Click again, it'll change it to 32 bits per channel. This will not promote your 8 bit footage to 32 bit, but what it will do is it'll allow you to take advantage of that 32 bit nature. Certain color correction effects and color grading tools are 32 bit, so they'll be able to take advantage of that 32 bit environment. I think it would be cool to enhance the sun, and we can do that by creating custom lens flares with Video Copilot's Optical Flares plugin. But before we do that, we need to understand a core concept of visual effects. This is a two-dimensional image, and if I come over here and I make it 3D, zoom out a little bit, and say rotate around the y-axis here, you can see that this image is flat. Let me go ahead and reset this. Visual effects are essentially overlaid onto your footage. So in order to sell the illusion that they're existing in 3D space, we'll need our elements to move, change shape and scale so that they look like they're not moving or changing shape or scale. Let me show you what I mean. Let's right click on our footage and we're gonna select track camera. So what this did is it analyzed our footage and it tracked various points of contrast within the image, trying to figure out what parts of the image were close to the camera and what parts of the image were far away. And once this is done, you'll see these tracking points all over your image. These targets can be used to add text, null objects, solids, and so on. But if we just come over here to click uh, and click on Create Camera, After Effects will create a virtual camera that follows the same motion we followed when we captured this footage. Now, any 3D object that I add to my comp here will fit into the scene. It will quote-unquote move so that it looks like it's not moving. So if I make sure that my timeline is selected and I hit Control y I can create a new solid. I'm going to call this OF for optical flares. Come up here to Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And I'm going to come over here and set this to transparent so we can see what we're doing. Now we'll go ahead and design a flare that better suits this scene in a second. But first, let's get this flare in a 3D space and make sure it's behaving the way we want it to behave. So let's set the source type to 3D. And let's also make sure that Disable 3D Perspective is selected. And then we're going to move this really far back into Z space. And we're just going to move this and make sure that it's over the sun. By the way, if you hold down shift, things will move a little bit faster for you. Now you may have to scrub through your timeline to make sure that this is staying where it's supposed to stay, or I should say move so that it looks like it's not moving. Yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape with that. We're going to go in here and we're going to customize this flare in just a second, but you can see how this looks really blown out right here and looks like there's some color bleeding around the edge. That has a lot to do with the transfer mode. So let's go over here and set this transfer mode to screen, and that'll right away get it to fit a little bit better into the scene. We're going to go over here and click on options. And this will launch Optical Flare's custom UI. And in the interest of time, let's go ahead and start with a preset and tweak it a bit. I'm going to go for something that looks somewhat natural. We'll go to presets. Uh, there's this natural light preset that works pretty well. It's not the right color that we want. So we're going to go over here to global color. And we're going to give this a much warmer look. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And let's go over here to lens objects. Uh, let's throw a streak in there. Let's go to custom. I like these spike balls. These are pretty cool because they can look like light rays. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch these out a bit. Cool. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to basic and I'm going to add an additional glow. Now with the glow selected over here, I'm going to make sure that it's 
not quite as bright, but bigger. And then I'm just going to go to a couple of these multi irises and I'm going to get these a little further away from the main flare. Okay, so for right now, let's go ahead and click OK. We can always come back to that and tweak it later. Now right now this looks like a huge blown out mess. So let's come over here to the controls and let's select scale and set that to about 40. And that looks a little bit more realistic. Go ahead and scrub through this again, making sure that it's sticking and that it looks like it fits in there. It's important to add your color grading effects to an adjustment layer so that your lens flare gets included in the grade. This will help make the flare fit into the scene. So let's make sure that our timeline is selected. Hit Control, Alt, and Y. That'll create a new adjustment layer, and we're just going to make sure that this is on top of the stack. And now we're going to go to Effect, Magic Bullet Suite, Magic Bullet Looks. All right, click Edit. All right, again, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and start with a preset. I'm going to go ahead and hover over Looks, come to Blockbuster Warm, and let's start with this Amber Crombie look. That's getting us pretty close to where we want to be. All right, the vignette is a little intense, so let's go ahead and back that off just a little bit. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, see, that's at 70%, so let's go ahead and reduce that. Let's try 39 or 40. A little bit better. And if you take a look at the RGB parade over here, we are nowhere near zero, meaning we don't have anything in this scene that is pure black which may not be a bad thing because we're pointing our camera towards the sun and it's going to wash out the image. Whether the lens flare is real or not, it's just going to wash out your shadows. So although I may want to come over here, select shadows and highlights and back that off just a little bit, increase the contrast just a bit. I don't want to go too crazy with it because I don't think that would be super photorealistic if I brought them down here. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. In fact, we'll toggle that effect on and off to see the difference. The other thing I think I'm going to do is come over here to the HSL tools and I'm going to try to see if I can recover some of that teal in the sky. And that's getting us a little bit closer. I kind of like the way that the oranges are complementing the teals. Let's come over here to our three-way color corrector and see how we look, too. Not bad. And yeah, one of my favorite tools for looks is if you come over here to the matte section is these diffusion tools. And I think if we come down here to the bottom, this warm mist preset I think is going to look pretty good in this image. And that's pretty subtle. You can see what it's doing to this area right here. It's just kind of enhancing that flare, adding a little bit more mist to the image. That looks pretty good. Again, we shot this in log, so we should add some uh, post-production sharpening, which we're going to do with the pop tool. Excuse me. And I usually set this to about 30 or so. Let's see how it looks. I don't know if you can see what that's doing to the bushes. I know it's kind of hard with the screen capture. But that's about it. One more thing I would like to take, have you guys take a look at is take a look at the RGB parade over here. Right here with this yellow triangle here, this is indicating one. This is pure white. Because we're working in 32 bits per channel, we actually have values here that exceed pure white, which is totally fine for YouTube and Vimeo, uh, but this is not broadcast legal. So if you were sending this off for broadcast, they would make you roll this off, such as with a shoulder tool. See how that clipped off the... The white's up here. I'll toggle that on and off so you guys can see the difference. So YouTube broadcast. Let's go ahead and take that off. We'll click the check mark here to say OK. That'll bring us back into After Effects. So back in After Effects, we can take a look at uh, what we started with and what we ended up with. I'm going to go ahead and solo my background plate. This is what we started with. We had blown out highlights over here in the sunset. And this is with our entire grade put together. And mind you, all of the color grading we put on a single layer. So if this is too intense for you, just uh, hit T on the keyboard. That'll bring up your opacity settings. And you can always dial that back a bit. See how this looks if I set it at, say, 75 or so. 
And lastly, one more thing that you may want to consider, again, if you're going for more of a cinematic look, those letterbox overlays are a great tool. And I've also noticed, too, that with phantom footage, uh, my horizon tends to be closer to the center of the frame. I don't know if you guys can see these purple dots right here on my uh, bounding box. That is pretty close to the center of the frame. That's not ideal. So if I drag this anamorphic overlay into my project, what that'll do, I'll go ahead and select all of my clips right here, and I'm going to pre-compose them. What that'll allow me to do is treat all, excuse me, treat all of those layers as a single layer. So now I can take this hit P for position properties and I can go ahead and recompose my shot. So much of that sky is blown out. I might as well cut it off. And I'm going to move that sun up towards the top right of the frame. And that's going to give us a much more cinematic look. All right, folks, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, please leave them in the box below. Please subscribe to the Edit Bay to stay up to date with post-production techniques. I'll see you next time.